Welcome back to the Caregiver Minute, where every weekday family and professional caregivers gather to refine their skills, gain inspiration, and prepare to serve. Well, in our last episode, we talked about attention deficit as kind of a light on the dashboard, a warning that, hey, something's going on with the brain, and there are a lot of things that could be causing that. As we've been working with a chiropractic physician and a mental health coach that are training to do the kinds of things that we do and to license our services, we've had some interesting conversations with them about how to help the people that they're serving be a little bit more aware of their brain health from day to day how to pay attention more to the lights on the dashboard. Randy had some really good insight regarding that. Randy, tell us a little bit more what you told our friends. We were talking about clinical epiphanies. What are things that that struck you and that you thought, oh, I've got to remember this when I'm visiting with my clients? And they said something, and it's not relevant to this conversation, but it, I followed up with this question. Every time that you interact with your client and they tell you, oh, I had a crappy night's sleep, I want you to ask them, how did that affect your brain? How, how is your ability to focus after that crappy night's sleep? And people say, oh, it's terrible. And then they might say, gal, I had a gouty flare, or my blood sugar was elevated last night, or I had terrible belly pain and I was on the toilet all night long with irritable bowel. And my question would be, well, how did that affect your brain? And people are like thinking, well, that's a dumb question. Why would you ask me that? And it's because only in today's medical society have we separated the parts of the body as if, as if they're independent. We, we talk about the heart from a cardiology standpoint. And then if you tell the heart doctor, hey, that medicine gives me a bellyache. The doctor might say, well, I don't think it's the medicine, but you should go talk to your gastroenterologist about your belly pain because I don't do that right? And then you go to the chiropractor and the chiropractor says, you know, let's work on your back, um, but doesn't ask you about what your blood sugar is. And so from my standpoint, how can you help someone with their back pain when their blood sugar is 300 all the time? Because a constantly elevated blood sugar inflames the brain and changes the pain sensation. So now the pain's going to be amplified because the brain is inflamed. So the question I always ask my clients is, how does that affect your brain? How did your exercise routine affect your brain? And most people say, God, I felt great. I got that second wind. I got that release of endorphins and I felt amazing. How'd that good night's sleep feel? How'd that Mexican food last night affect your brain? And people will say, I didn't think about that. I want you to think about that. So when you leave this caregiver minute today, I want you to ask yourself that question 10 times. You go to your current meeting and your boss chews on you. And I want you to think to yourself, how did that affect my brain? Now I'm, that's all I'm thinking about. That stress level ratcheted up and now I can't even stay focused and concentrated on my, the job I've got to do. Or you go home and your wife has a conversation and she snuggles and gives you a kiss. How did that affect your brain? Because that, that gentle touch, that snuggle, that care releases endorphins and we feel amazing. You should ask yourself, how did that affect your brain after you eat, after you exercise, after you sleep, after social interaction, after you take a nutritional supplement? If we're constantly aware about how what around us affects our brain, it changes the way we interact with our environment and the way that we protect our brain long term. I love this insight. And it's valuable not only as we try to protect our own health, but as we're serving others, we should be asking that same question. If we serve someone a Valentine's Day dinner and there's a whole bunch of extra sugar, how does it affect their brains? Do we see any sort of change in behavior? I would tell you a lot of situations in long-term care or even in family caregiving situations are driven by some of those subtle little changes. And once we start seeing them and connecting the dots, you can't unsee them. And you make different choices as you become aware of what works and what moves us in the wrong direction. Yeah, so from the caregivers, this is a good example. Uh, I do a lot of consulting for assisted living centers. And in one assisted living center, I went at five o'clock in the morning to participate in shift change. And then 
just participate with the caregivers through the course of the morning. And on this particular day, they said, we have a family activity at 10 o'clock. And so we want this place spick and span. We want all the residents up and moving and they want their hair done and dressed really nice. So when their family comes in to participate. And so that means we started getting people out of bed at 5.30 in the morning. And my parents are in their 80s. And I tell you, I've been to their house at 10 o'clock in the morning and they're barely moving. They're just getting out of bed at 10 in the morning. Their breakfast is my lunch, right? And so I asked myself, oh my goodness, I wonder how these residents are gonna fare at seven o'clock tonight when they're exhausted and completely wasted because we were getting them out of bed at five in the morning so they looked presentable for when their family came at 10 o'clock. I get there's things that we gotta do and we gotta make pe people presentable and get them prepared for their doctor's visits and family visits. But like Eric said, if we're just constantly aware of how that affects people, maybe the next day we let them sleep, we give them breakfast in bed, we accommodate them because we're interested in how our daily interactions affect their brain. Yeah, such a good point. Well, we hope this has given you a lot to think about and to pay attention to going forward, both in your own life and in the lives of the people that you serve. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon for another episode of the Caregiver Minute.